everyone, and welcome to God's Plan, Your Part, a podcast where our goal is to read the entire Bible in a year, seeking to understand God's plan of redemption while discovering daily and practically your part in it. Hey everybody, just as Christmas is almost here, we are finally closing in on the Easter story. (laughs) We have our (laughs) holidays a little bit mixed up here on the podcast, but we are reading today Mark 11 and John 12, and in the wise words of Jenny, she says we are closing in on the slaughter. <laughs> Yikes, that's not what I said. I, I was thinking more or less like like animals that are like raised for slaughter. I said that we're not necessarily as close to the raising part as we are the slaughter part. Uh, because as we all know, Jesus was crucified when he died. And at this point, all of, like, I mean, I'm sure he sees all of the signs happening. He knows that the time is coming. Uh, Certain things, for instance, there's a lot of prophecy being fulfilled um, when Jesus comes riding on the donkey. Uh, There's also prophecy fulfilled when Jesus is, he's literally given sign after sign. And there are people, namely Pharisees and um, the scribes and what was the other one? Pharisees, scribes, and one other from... It's like the authorities and stuff. Yeah, from John 12 specifically that I was reading today, um, that they will not believe. Their hearts will be hardened, their eyes will be blind, and they will not come to know Jesus or accept Jesus as who he is. So Jesus is very aware of these things, like prophecy after prophecy is being fulfilled, Uh, He comes in on the donkey. He's like, he has his feet washed by Mary um, and tells her, you know, save the rest of that for my burial. Like what? All this stuff is just, it's all coming to fruition. It's getting more and more clear what's going on. And he's, Mm -hmm. he is being more and more open about it. There's a couple of things that stick out to me from John 12. The first thing, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the Lazarus story that gets missed a lot. Uh, Mary and Martha apparently gave a dinner either for Jesus or for Lazarus. It seems like maybe it's for Jesus, um, but Lazarus and Jesus are kind of like the featured guests. And it, it's pretty cool. Like the last time we saw Lazarus, he was dead mm-hmm. and he had like grave clothes wrapped around his eyes and stuff. Now we see him and he's just reclining at the table eating dinner with Jesus. Super weird. It's pretty wild. Um, that's chapter 12, verse 2, but then you get a little bit of a window into what's going on with the Pharisees at this point. If you look at verse 10, it said, so the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. And I think this is a, a really compelling verse and a really important detail, because here you have a person that has been so impacted by Jesus that literally looking at the life of Lazarus proves the divinity of Jesus. Looking mm-hmm. at the life of Lazarus proves the authority of Jesus. And we're not necessarily in the same boat. We definitely are in the same boat spiritually. Um, maybe you have been physically raised from the dead by Jesus, but I, I don't know anyone that has been. Uh, but what's cool is that when people look at Lazarus, they are reminded of how great Jesus is. Mm -hmm. And this is literally, I think, what God intends for our lives as believers, that if people are offended by Jesus, that's what the Pharisees were. They were very frustrated and very upset with Jesus. They were then by by extent or whatever, by extension, very frustrated and upset with Lazarus because every time people saw Lazarus, they believed even more in Jesus. So now we find out that the Pharisees plan is not only to kill Jesus, it's also to kill Lazarus. Yeah, and I think there was something else. I feel like that was maybe in Mark chapter 11. Is that right? When you read, there was another instance where they were trying to not capture him, but they were like trying to, they were trying to get him. And because they're asking about the baptism of John. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've seen this in some of the other gospels too, the same story. But basically... When that happens, Jesus is just like, well, listen, I'll tell you who sent me if you're going to tell me, like, the significance of, of – was it the significance of John's yeah, we haven't Yeah, we haven't paid much attention to that particular story. Basically, the, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they confront Jesus, and they want to know 
with what authority he's doing the things that he's doing, which he's been very clear about. He's he's said this multiple times. And so Jesus, kind of sensing what they're up to, he says, hey, I have a question for you. Uh, on whose authority was John's baptism? Was it of God's authority or was it of man's authority? And you get this glimpse into their thought process. Like they can't, they can't answer either because either one presents them like a, a delicate position. And all they care about is authority for themselves. All they care about is position for themselves. And so they actually just choose not to even answer the question and go away. Well, yeah, because it says that if they say from heaven, then it's going to be like they'll look really dumb because Jesus would say to them, well, why didn't you believe it yep, then? Yep, yep. And on the opposite, if it was from man, they were afraid that people would be really upset because they really believed in John. And it's so interesting how this is very much like it's so politically driven Uh because they want all of the power. Like, when did it actually stop becoming a God thing for them? Because, like, it's so masked because they're like the leading people of the of the Jewish belief system like i don't i don't know how else to say that but like they are the top notch top tier people and yet they're super concerned about politics or political standings like when did this the part of like caring about god stop when did their spiritual life suffer on behalf of their own personal yeah, authority? and i think we see that a lot today too like for us specifically like We've been called a Christian nation. I think that gets super, super overused and masked for a lot of things. I think there's a lot of unfortunate conflict today all in the name of like spiritual things. And it's just all sin and violence. So I don't know. It's kind of like it's it's a bummer to know that this pretty much existed always. Um, but it's really coming out in this instance, specifically in this story with all of this criticism he's getting but also no answer from them either it's interesting because it has existed throughout the history of god working in his people i think of king saul king saul quickly i mean king saul is a long time ago Mm -hmm. like in context of what we're reading and king saul gives up everything following god doing god's will in favor of his own kingdom and his own wants and his own desires and so Saul sets off like this path of just really crooked and really um, greedy and just nasty self-seeking, self-seeking, selfish leadership that is ignoring the will of God in favor of themselves. So the the Pharisees here have a long line of people in their in their ancestry uh, that have fallen into this before, and we continue to follow into this today. So we need to be really careful about it is a very helpful cautionary tale um, not to be out for our own selves, but instead to make sure we're focused on God's kingdom. At the end of John chapter 12, uh, there's two small details that I feel like are pretty easy to skip, and I'm not sure that I hear a lot about them. One is a voice comes from heaven. Basically, Mm -hmm. God speaks from heaven and says, this is in verse 28, 29. The crowd stood there and heard it said that it had thunders others said an angel had spoken to him and basically this voice had said i have glorified it and i will glorify it again uh, you can go read it for yourself but it's basically god speaking from heaven um confirming that jesus is his son and jesus is doing his will and then another kind of small detail that's kind of a big deal that gets missed a lot in verse 42 this is the Coming in on the end of John chapter 12, it says, Nevertheless, many even of the authorities believed in him, meaning Jesus, but for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. This is in that line I've been kind of pulling this thread the whole way through the story. Not all the Pharisees hated Jesus. There were very many people who believed that he was who he said he was. And that is something new that I'm noticing, or maybe it's something new I'm being reminded of. Um, that it wasn't the whole world against Jesus. There were people that understood what the what the text said. They understood what God had already revealed, and they believed that Jesus was who he said he was. And then at the same time, there was a, another group of people who had incredibly hard hearts and didn't want to know or recognize who Jesus was. So I guess for your part today, it's really thinking about, um, again, I often say this, but like discerning deception 
especially in um, the area where I feel like politics and faith can cross over into each other. Um, and I think it's really easy to be deceived these days, especially with a lot of people who represent or say they represent God and his mission. And it's pretty obvious from the things that they say or the words that they speak that it is driven by other motivations. So just be really careful, especially in a world today where you're just getting a lot of information thrown in your face and thrown in your way, um, sometimes in the name of God or in the name of Jesus. Just remember, again, to turn to God's word. Um, look at the examples of Jesus' teaching that he experienced, that he gave himself um, when coming into uh, conflict with some of these voices that were out there that really were using their positions of power to try to sway the people for their own good. So um, just remember that today, especially in this crazy world we live in. Um, really just go back to God's word, look to him for direction, um, be careful and discern deception of the massive pools of deception around us today. So thanks for joining us. We'll be back again tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to God's Plan, Your Part. If anything stuck out to you, if you have any questions, or if you'd like to receive a Bible, you can email us at godsplanyourpart at gmail.com. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please consider supporting us through the link in our description. We love that you're on this journey with us, and we hope you have a great day. See you tomorrow.